off. Just 39 days till Arizona voters get their early ballots in the mail. And today we're taking the temperature of the races and those voters. Our political insiders joining us right now, Marcus Del Artino is a Republican consultant at First Strategic, also a Team McCain veteran. And on the Democratic side, Tony Connie, a consultant at Slingshot Campaigns. He was deputy director of the Biden campaign in Arizona and managed Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego's first campaign. Welcome back to Square Off. Thanks for having us. Yeah, glad to be here. Let's start with that U.S. Senate race. Good week for Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. Not so good week for his challenger, Republican Blake Masters. Let's let's run it down. Uh, Arizona's U.S. Senate race shifts from a toss-up to a uh, rating to a lean Democratic. That's according to the authoritative University of Virginia Center for Politics. The analysis, the Republican candidate's weakness, and the Democrats might face a not-so-bleak environment. Also, we learned that Blake Masters scrubbed his website of far-right positions on abortion and his claim that the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump, apparently to make him more palatable to the moderate voters he would need to win. And a third Masters story, and this was kind of changing through the week. He lost the two financial legs he had to stand on. Billionaire Peter Thiel, his benefactor and former boss, cut off funding to a pro-Masters PAC that spent $15 million during the primary. The National Republican Senate Committee canceled pro-Masters ads in October when early voting starts. But we got news late in the week that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is going to hold a fundraiser for Blake Masters. Wow, that's a lot to digest for, for just one week. Marcus, I'll let you bite off whatever piece you think is most significant, and might be the last one, Mitch McConnell, deciding to get involved after this stare down with Peter Thiel. What do you make of it? I think, you know, here's what's going on. Mitch McConnell, is his, his board has changed dramatically in the last six months, right? And we've got, instead of going into an offensive mode, we're moving into a defensive mode. The, the insiders know that in every special election post the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade, that Democrats are overperforming. Mitch McConnell knows that. And so he's got to move into protection mode to start protecting some of these senators that are going to be in tighter races than they, we thought. He, it was going to be a blowout six months ago. So he's asked Peter Thiel, hey, look, I need you to take responsibility for at least two of these candidates and pick up the general election tab. Peter Thiel said, there's no way. I want to just do the primary. I'm out. So we're watching that negotiation play out, frankly, in the Washington Post. Um, as we speak, and I think at the end of the day, Peter Thiel is going to have to step up and put some money down in Arizona and Ohio. Because this fundraiser may not get Blake Masters where he needs to be, which is to fill a massive hole in October when early voting starts. And right now, there are there's no significant ad buy for Blake Masters. Yeah, the money that he lost from McConnell was independent expenditure money. It's money that would have been spent by the committee which is the big dollar stuff that they're not allowed to coordinate with masters. And so the fact that this fundraiser is happening, it seems to me like it's just sort of a, okay, we'll show up and help you raise some money. It doesn't indicate that they're going to be spending big. Bram, here's the other problem. We're getting into almost a little too little too late because, yeah. as you know, TV inventory is selling out in Arizona. And that's, that's what you need to close in the last 30 days. So time is of the essence. This, they got to get this money in the bank ASAP. And yet, polls show he's behind. Um, can he make it up? Well, he's a man at war right now with his own web page, right? Like, he's going back and deleting things that he said before and then filming a TV ad saying a lie that we know is not true because what he deleted from his web page. I think he knows he's in real trouble because of his very extreme positions he took, maybe to get the, you know, the Trump endorsement. Who knows? I think it's going to be really challenging for him to make up you know, the deficit. I think it's going to get closer. But, you know, what's really hurting him is Kelly's a strong candidate who's running a good campaign. And so it's there's not going to be a lot of opportunities for him to pick up. Larger question on the scrubbing, because we've been wondering for months, how do these Republican candidates who've gone so far right in the primary, how do they move toward the center, which is pretty typical of any uh, campaign? He's, he's trying to move toward the center. He's doing very normal things that politicians do, meeting with seniors, going to businesses. Will voters even know that's happened, that that was Blake Masters in the primary? And this is the new, improved Blake Masters in the general election. Well, I, 
you know, I, I tend to think that some of them will because his Democratic opponent will make a story out of it. There's no doubt about it. So I, he's going to spend his TV time making sure that they know. But I think largely they won't. This race has always been about a turnout fight. Do I think he can make up the eight points? Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. Um, the race is going to tighten, but there's always been a turnout fight is what this race was going to come down to at the end of the day. We're going to be largely mar uh, matched up on voter enthusiasm. Um, and that, that's the key to this race, is can you turn your voters out? You brought up uh, abortion, the Roe versus Wade ruling uh, back in June. It is clearly reverberating mm -hmm. with voters. I've heard po polls of Republicans and affiliated where the ban really uh, matters to them and them. And then sometime in mid to late September, Arizona's ban is going to be back in the mm -hmm. news, right? Because we're expecting a judge's ruling. What is your ruling on whether the ban uh, the ban on the abortion ban should be lifted, whether it should be allowed to, to become lost or renews the whole fight again. How significant is that issue in this election? Oh, it's going to be significant. Uh, it's, po it's polling number one issue. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's the driver. Republicans have to change a channel, and it's going to be hard to do, and they have to do, make a coordinated effort between all their campaigns to do it. we got to start talking about the economy um, and start talking about the border and the influx of fentanyl, um, sex trafficking, anything that should get the channel changed, uh, because September 20th is right around the corner from early ballots going out. Can they change the channel? It's, it's going to be really hard to do, in part because of the very strong positions they took during the primaries. But I think the other thing is that what this court ruling does is it makes this a state issue too. And so that's gonna re reverberate much farther than the congressionals and the Senate races. This is gonna be an issue in the attorney general's race and the governor's race and maybe even in state legislative district races. And people are seeing examples from other states of terrible stories about the health risks that this provides to people who need an abortion for various reasons. And those news stories aren't gonna stop and I think that it's gonna be really, really hard to change the topic. I uh, wanna end a little farther down the ballot, the school superintendent race where former superintendent Tom Horn defended and then sort of stopped defending Disgraced former lawmaker David Stringer. That Stringer was on Horn's campaign team. Uh, you'll also remember Stringer resigned from the House three years ago after he refused to cooperate with an ethics investigation of sex crime charges he faced 30 years before. What does this whole episode tell us about Tom Horn? Uh, that he has horrible judgment and that he is someone who should not be anywhere near public office, let alone the public office that runs our K-12 through schools. It's... It just doesn't make sense that he, first of all, even had this man as a part of his campaign. And then secondly, on a dime, after you know a week of criticism, kind of pretended that, this, that Stringer wasn't a part of his campaign. But I think it's, the, it's, it's over for him. He already was a, probably the worst candidate Republicans could have nominated in that race. And this is just you know the tip of the iceberg. He's had some problems in his past when he was attorney general. Yeah. Uh, he's also been superintendent of public instruction before as well. He's 77 years old now. He has won statewide three times. Is that something insignificant in his favor that may carry him to victory? He could, again, it's a product of turnout. I mean, that's what's going to happen, especially for these lower ballot. I mean, when you said we we're going a little farther down the ballot, we went to the bottom of the ballot, but it, <laughs> we didn't go to mine. Listen, he, Blake Masters and Mark Kelly are going to drive the, the down ticket races. And if Republicans show up, then he's got a very well chance of, or very good chance of winning. Um, but again, this race largely on every ticket, we can say this, is going to come down to women. And Republican consultants have known this for a long time. They are the golden goose of the Republican Party. They are going to make the determination, and we're going to see it more this cycle than any other cycle. Marcus Del Artino, Tony Connie, thank you for a great discussion. Thank you.